Hello folks, I hope you're having a good day today. Today I want to take a look at C.L. Moore, uh, and C.L. Moore specifically was a writer for a number of places, but you got started in Weird Tales in the 30s, um, at the same magazine that H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, lots of other people were writing for during that time, lots of big names and so forth. Um, and she was actually a really big person. She got started uh, with Weird Tales. Her first story was, she, she wrote it in 33, I believe it was actually published in 34, um, in the first couple of months of 34. It's, then in that short story, is called Sham Blow. That's actually the first thing that C.L. Moore wrote. Now, before I talk too much about um, Northwest Smith and the first story in the Northwest Smith Chronicles, I do want to tell you a little bit about who C.L. Moore was, um, kind of to make sure that you get sort of the context of who she was as a writer and why people are still reading her today. Um, first of all, she's in the Hall Science Fiction Hall of Fame, so... If you like science fiction writers uh, that have been honored enough that they're in the Hall of Fame, there you are. That's the first reason. Second reason is, is that she was actually one of the first major female voices in the genre of science fiction and fantasy. Um, she influenced a lot of people like Lee Brackett, Marion Zimmer Bradley, many people that would follow her. In fact, um, C.L. Moore and her husband actually took Lee Brackett under her wing um, and helped uh, to mentor and tutor and develop her um, and so forth. So she's definitely a well-known uh, person in terms of how many people she influenced. She was actually in the Lovecraft circle too. Um, she was one of the of Lovecraft's protégés and fellow writers and so forth that Lovecraft uh, really enjoyed. And in fact, she Lovecraft actually introduced her um, to another one of his people that he would write with, um, letters and so forth, and that was Henry Kuttner. And the two of them would actually get married, C.L. Moore and Henry Kuttner. They'd actually create sort of a tag team in science fiction for a while, um, where each of them would sort of finish each other's stories. One of them would get up and the other one would kind of pick it up where the first one left off. They were each other's muse. She would actually publish some of her stories under his name because he got paid more money. But they would oftentimes write a lot of stories together too. Um, and so we'll actually be taking a look at actually some stories by Henry Kuttner too, like The Dark World, um, coming down the pipe pretty soon. I have taken a look at a short story they did together. It's a science fiction story called Mimsy with the Boar Groves, which is considered by many to be one of the top ten science fiction short stories of all time. It's in my top five, and I've already reviewed that for you, so I'll go ahead and link you to that in the comments below. Um, but uh, C.L. Moore, um, while she was writing for Weird Tales and some other places, um, she never really wrote in the Cthulhu Mythos or anything else, um, and so forth. And unlike a lot of the fellow pulps of the day, her characters and her world building aren't particularly purple. Uh, you know, you for somebody who's writing for Weird Tales or for the pulp audience and so forth, you might normally expect her to, to, to use a lot of adjectives, to be super mega descriptive and so forth. Um, a lot of these writers like H.P. Lovecraft, you know, never met an adjective he didn't like. And that was true for lots of other writers too, obviously. But see, on more on the other hand, her writing prose is very succinct, very clean. And while there's a certain level of, of, you know, description and so forth and some solid word choice um, and word smithery, she's not a purple writer, which distinguishes her from many other pulp writers. So if you're going back to pulp writers, she's a good person to actually check in on, first of all, because she's, you know, one of the first major voices in, in the science fiction and uh, fantasy field who is a woman. She's also in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame. She has a lot of things that are famous out there like Mimsy with the Boar Groves and Northwest Smith. Northwest Smith, the character that she introduces here in Sean Blow, and she'll continue for about 13 short stories um, in his sort of oeuvre, is basically the first major of these sort of pan planner uh, smugglers who will smuggle things and do some things uh, from planet to planet to planet. They'll sort of be outside the law and so forth, but they have a heart of gold. When push comes to shove, they're going to do the right thing, help people out, and so forth. But they're not going to—they're going to do it sort of against their better judgment, uh, and so forth. Um, and he's sort of very much kind of the place where you think that Han Solo is probably uh, a Han Solo character from Star Wars, and so forth. Um, as we know, uh, the uh, George Lucas was a big fan of the pulp era, as well as also um, the uh, things that were in the, the movies that weren't the movies, uh, the serials. He also really liked those sort of serials that were all about like cliffhangers and so forth too. Um, um, and you get a lot of that in the Indiana Jones um, as well as in the Star Wars field, particularly with characters like Han Solo and Indiana Jones proper. So let's take a look at Northwest Smith, and particularly the first story, which is Sean Blow, and do a sort of review on it. Now, Sean Blow is set in Mars, um, and it's going to be set in this really far away town, and you're going to get a pretty quick glimpse as to who Northwest Smith is on the first page. Of the story, there's going to be this woman who's being chased and she's being called a sham blow by many local people who seem to be chasing her down in order to kill her. Um, and she seems to be a little girlish cat 
alien thing. Northwest Smith doesn't know who she is or what she is, um, when, or what they mean when they say Shamblo. He assumes it's her race or something like that, uh, and so forth. But he doesn't really—he's not really the sort of person that's going to be like, you know, letting a crowd kill a little girl. That's just not who he is, <laughs> and so forth. Um, and he'll actually um, get them to go away by saying, uh, just in order in order to push them away, he's going to say she's his, uh, and so forth. And as soon as they find out uh, that she's his. Um, they will like leave in disgust at uh, Northwest Smith, and 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 other people are going to start um, not looking at him kindly, uh, and so forth, with a lot of disgust, uh, and so forth too, as they learn that, that um, he owns uh, this Chamblow. Um, so he's going to talk to the woman, uh, who's like kind of more like a little girl, like more like a little cat-like alien, a uh, girlish creature with some human features and so forth. And they're going to talk and have conversations and so forth. Not much because she can't speak a lot of English. She'll follow him and so forth, and the two of them will kind of go back to his place. Uh, she'll, he'll, she'll have another place to sleep in the apartment that he has and so forth. And basically what's going to happen is he's going to try to find out who Deshaun Blow is. Um, he's going to be involved with some smuggling operations. He's trying to meet up with a Venusian friend of his, um, who is uh, the other Venusian species, uh, named Jarl. And uh, he's going to be trying to meet up with Jarl, who's a fellow smuggler, uh, and so forth. He's going to be doing some dark things. And you definitely get a feel very early on that he's a character who has a lot of uh, a bounty on his head, right? He's, he's wanted by the law, uh, and so forth. And you're going to find out that he's, you know, that kind of a smuggler. And now I'm actually going to stop the review right there uh, because it's about halfway through the story actually and so I'll stop the short story there and let you finish it up if you're interested in it. I'll actually link you to it in the comments below so you can check it out yourself. Um, and I'll try if I can to find a collection like the one that I have that has all the Northwest Smith stories in it so you can read them all if you want. Um, again, Northwest Smith is very much a, a hero in the is is is, is absolutely here. Now, this is a planetary romance. Um, if you've been following along, you'll know that I've done a few planetary romance stories up till now, and I'm going to continue it so forth. Um, I kind of like the idea of starting with the first kind of sort of major planetary romance that got a lot of sort of stuff kicked off with Edgar Rice Burroughs's, uh, you know. Um, John Carter of Mars with the Princess of Mars and so forth. Um, and now we're continuing to move forward and we're going to continue to push forward the genre moving forward. Uh, and I think that C.L. Moore, again, has a very strong way of writing planetary romance. Um, so, again, Northwest Smith is a very strong character in that sort of genre and so forth. And again, he's that kind of outlaw, heart of gold person. So, what did you think of the stories? Have you read it? I'm happy to engage with it more. What do you think of C.L. Moore as a writer? Do you like her? Uh, I think she's actually really good. Uh, do you think that my, my views of her are over exaggerated? Exaggerated or under exaggerated, uh, and so forth. Uh, do you think the fact that she's easier to read for people that are going into pulp because they're not, it's not as pulpish as a lot of the other pulp writers are during that era? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? How am I to engage you with that more um, in the comments below? Have you read the story? Have you read some of the other Northwest Smith stuff? Happy to talk with you more about the comments below. Um, and hey, if you watch this movie, or <laughs> all the way, yeah, it's sort of a movie, uh, if you watch this all the way to the end, hey, uh, and, and you enjoyed it, hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more reviews of this to follow. This channel really likes to unpack classics of fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Um, and this planetary romance is sort of science fiction and fantasy, so there you are. Um, and so it's kind of two of them at once. And uh, C.L. Moore, again, is in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, so you know we're going to hit her up at some point in time. Uh, and she's, I think Northwest Smith stuff is a good example of some lost classics that people have probably forgotten about, but probably we should go check out, even if you're just coming to it from a modern sort of Han, Han Solo, Star Wars sort of viewpoint. That's fine. And finally, hey, I want to thank you so much for watching this video, taking some time out of your day. We all have such busy days and busy lives. So the fact that you took this time out, I really appreciate that. So thanks. Have a good one.